a city in Hungary, a young man enjoys a successful career, plays sports on the weekend, and leads a full life despite having hemophilia. A little farther east, in Romania, his peer, who also has hemophilia, must limit his job opportunities because his knee joints are painfully distorted. The difference in the two comes from the standard of hemophilia care and access to treatment within each country. To address such issues, a series of meetings known as the Vilbad Kreutz Initiative are held every number of years, including in 2013 with the support of the EDQM, an arm of the Council of Europe. Each meeting results in recommendations that establish or amend minimum standards of care for hemophilia. The 2013 recommendations were later adopted as a resolution by the Council of Europe, thereby strengthening them. In 2016, the renewed process resulted in 12 new recommendations, which are introduced here. In the 1970s and 80s, many people with haemophilia were infected with HCV through their government-provided treatment. This became one of the leading causes of death in the haemophilia community. Novel drugs called direct-acting antiviral agents can cure HCV, and people with haemophilia should have immediate access to them. A good tender process that involves both patients and clinicians has proved to provide the best outcome in terms of access to the safest and most efficacious products. Since the introduction of clotting factor concentrates, the life expectancy of people with haemophilia has greatly increased. This brings along new challenges, and treatment centers need to partner with the appropriate general physician, like a geriatrician, to provide adequate care to the aging patient with haemophilia. Patients have become experts on their condition. Clinical systems and governments need our input to understand what treatment options are best for us. Standardization of quality of care will contribute to the reduction of health inequalities across Europe and will assure patient access to treatment and care is harmonized within each European country. In order to better inform decision makers about the most appropriate products, data from individual treatment centers should be collected at national levels through databases. We need to show kids with hemophilia that they can be active and contribute to society like all healthy people. Hemophilia doesn't have to be a disease. It can just be a condition, really. Antibodies called inhibitors are today's main challenge in hemophilia treatment and care, and we still don't understand enough about them. Patients and parents should be involved in discussion regarding product choice and usage in the early period of treatment. Approximately 30% of people with hemophilia will develop inhibitors to their treatment, but the majority of patients with inhibitors will start responding again to treatment after immune therapy induction. Although this may be expensive initially, it's likely to prove cost-effective in the longer term. The EDQM have recommended that patients with inhibitors receive ITI since 1999, but it's still not readily available in many European countries. Some surgeries, especially orthopedic ones, can really improve quality of life but should only be carried out in centers with relevant experience. People with hemophilia and inhibitors feel despair because it is a disease within a disease.
Results should be used to identify carriers among women in a family and help them navigate their health and reproductive choices. Results should also be used to adapt treatment for people with mild and moderate hemophilia who bleed in different ways. This is significant because it will lead to better treatment outcomes and it also represents the whole community, including women with rare bleeding disorders. New longer life products make it possible for people with hemophilia to be equally protected from bleeds with less infusions or better protected with the same infusion. However, it is crucial to tailor treatment to each patient based on their individualized needs. Access to quality treatment makes a difference between living a normal life or living a one in pain and disability. Like, uh, I know treatment is expensive, but I want to live. This makes it possible for more people to receive treatment on a prophylaxis basis instead of only after a bleed occurs. Prophylaxis helps prevent bleeds, preserve joint function or slow the progression of joint damage. Overall, this will ensure for less burden on patients and health care systems. The road has been long, but much has been achieved. We are firmly on our way and are now equipped with more tools to ensure adequate treatment and care for all people with hemophilia across and within all European countries. These recommendations can help. The EHC and our national member organizations are ready to partner with national and European decision makers to implement them. Join us on our path. Kierkegaard said that the most painful state of existence is remembering the future, and particularly the future you can never have. Enforcing these EDQM recommendations will give people with haemophilia a future and will give them a life free of pain where they no longer have to live on the shadows of society.